Hi book lovers, welcome back to my channel. I am finally doing my April wrap up. April was honestly my best reading month so far this year. I had so many more four or five star reads last month than I have in a while. Um, and some of them I'm already adding to my favorite books of 2020 list. I read about 40 books last month. Um, half of them were audiobooks. I am slowly making my way through the LA Public Library audiobook list. It's got such an amazing romance selection. So here's my wrap up for April 2020. The first book that I read this month and one of my new favorite books of 2020 is Don't Go Stealing My Heart by Kelly Siskind. This book is the cutest thing ever. I mean it does have its more serious moments um, but this book just made me feel so wholesome and happy. We have a Robin Hood heroine who steals from the rich to give to the poor and her new target is our hero Jack who is an absolute sweetheart. Clementine is trying to steal a Van Gogh painting from Jack but once she gets to know him in all his Elvis impersonation and fellow lizard owning glory she realizes that she can't steal from this amazing man that she's falling in love with. I loved how quirky this book was. It was dorky, it was sweet, and now Jack is one of my new favorite nice guy heroes. Next up I listened to Only Ever You by C.D. Reese. This one is available on KU so you can listen to it through that. I didn't really like this one all that much. I'm giving it like two, two and a half stars. It just didn't leave that much of an impression on me. This is one of C.D. Reese's non-erotic romances. She's more known for those erotic darker romances. Um, those are what I prefer from her honestly. But this one is like a very low angst, low drama kind of contemporary romance and it just was really boring. We have our main characters who were former childhood friends. The hero was kind of a big nerd and a dork and the heroine would always be the one who would defend him from his bullies. Then they make a pact that if by the time that they both turn 30 and they're not already married that they'll marry each other instead. So it's a cute premise and I've actually read romances with a marriage pact like this and have enjoyed them. I just never really understood them or like why they ever fall back in love with each other. So this one sadly just didn't work for me. Next is Just a Boyfriend by Soraya Wilson. This one is another KU audiobook. This one is actually the standalone sequel to another book that I listened to earlier this year. That one I did not like but this one thankfully I enjoyed a bit more. I mean I still gave it three stars. It's nothing to write home about but it's still like a, a cutesy new adult college sports romance. It is a second chance romance. Um, Ember and Bash were high school sweethearts but they never told anybody much less told their parents because surprise their parents actually end up falling in love and getting married making them step siblings. The hero is the one who actually ends up leaving so the heroine is not really happy to be around him now that they're in college together. The writing and the storytelling is a little bit bland. I mean besides the whole step sibling thing there isn't really anything special or unique about this romance. And then I found a new historical romance series to add to my favorites list. This one is the Uptown Girl series by Joanna Shoup and oh my gosh I loved both books in this series so so much. There are gonna be three books in the series about three sisters. I read the first two books last month and fell head over heels in love with this Gilded Age historical romance series. I didn't expect to love it as much as I did but the first book, The Rogue of Fifth Avenue, is amazing. I love these sisters, these heroines so so much. They are so strong, so independent. Mamie is the first one to get her story. She comes from a very respectable family in New York City and she becomes a bit of a Robin Hood and helps out those that are less fortunate than her. Frank the hero is is their family's lawyer and he's kind of tasked with babysitting Mamie, like trying to keep her out of trouble which she seems to just dive right into. Frank and Mamie just have a fantastic chemistry together. So much wit, so much banter. I loved like how complex both of these characters were and oh my gosh the sex in the series is so so good. I loved it. I did not expect this series to be as hot as it was either and I gave this one five stars 
stars. I loved it so much. And then the second book in the series is The Prince of Broadway and I loved it as well. It's like four and a half, maybe five stars for me. We got a little hint of this couple from the first book. Florence is the sister who gets her story in this one and she wants to be a gaming hell owner. She wants to open up her own casino one day and she needs to learn from the best and the best is Clay who is one of the most infamous and ruthless casino owners in town. Again, Florence is another wonderful kick-ass heroine. I loved how she just went after what she wanted, which is of course the casino. And then Clay, he actually wants to get revenge on Florence's father and he figures that he'll be able to get his revenge by getting close to Florence by mentoring her. Both of them are just so smart and savvy, uh, very business-minded, and I love them. This book's timeline kind of runs parallel to the first book so while Clay and Florence are falling in love, Mamie and Frank are also falling in love. The sex again is on fire, it's so good. The series is just incredible. I am so glad that I finally got to them and I am definitely going to be reading the third book about the last sister Justine very very soon. And then of course anytime Jessica Kane has a new release, I gotta read it. And this one it was the perfect gift. Um, it's not like a new favorite of mine, but I mean, it was still nice to read. Very hot and dirty very over the top as Jessica Kane usually is. The heroine has two awful sisters who kind of prostitute her to the hero, but of course it's insta-love from the start, lots of claiming. I mean it's your typical Jessica Kane read. And then I read the Happy Ever After playlist by Abby Jimenez. This one is the standalone sequel to the friend zone and I love this one. I was a little bit scared going into this one just because I was kind of expecting it to be quite depressing um, but it's very much a rom-com super light fluffy and happy the hero Jason is another super nice guy and you can't help but fall in love with him Sloane the heroine is dealing with the grief of losing her fiance and ends up finding a lost dog named Tucker she tries to find the owner to get in contact with him but after like a week or two with no response she ends up adopting him and he helps her come out of that grief out of that depression when Jason finally replies back to her, they kind of start up a little fun, flirty, friendly text messaging thing. But when they finally meet each other in real life, they know that they're it for each other. I loved how Jason just went all in for Sloane. Like he knew she was the one for him and he wasn't gonna let anything, much less his rising fame to stardom, um, prevent him from being with her, from being with the love of his life. It's just a very wholesome and sweet romance. I love that they started off by just texting each other and these two do go through a lot to finally get their much deserved happily ever after. My next read is another rom-com, You Deserve Each Other by Sarah Hogel. This one I had really high hopes for, especially since everyone, I saw everyone loving this book. But sadly, it did not live up to the hype for me. I'm only giving this one three stars. The first half of this book was such a struggle to read. I mean, I looked up reviews and everyone, even the ones with glowing reviews, also said that they struggled with the first half but that the second half made up for it so I was praying that it would get better. It did but only very slightly. Here we've got an engaged couple who is not really in love with each other anymore but they're trying to get the other person to back out of their engagement so that that person will be the one um, to have to pay for the wedding that's not going to happen and also so that everyone in their small town will also put the blame on the one who backed out first. Nicholas and Naomi were just so petty and annoying. I didn't really like their characters. I mean they did get better. I didn't end up hating them which I expected to. They had quite the toxic relationship where they just did not give a shit about the other person. They took the other person for granted. Like they just didn't care about the other person anymore and I genuinely wanted them to break up. I felt like they would be happier on their own. I kind of still do, but yeah, this one, it was quite a letdown. They do all these like ridiculous antics to get the other person to quit the engagement, but it really just came across as very immature, childish, petty. Some 
some of it is genuinely funny, but most of the time I was just cringing. And then I finally read Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I listened to the audio of this one because everyone told me to listen to the audiobook and I'm actually glad I did because I definitely would have liked it a lot less if I would read it. This one, I'm giving it three stars. It did not live up to the hype for me. It was an addicting read, like I could not put this audiobook down, so I'll give it that. But I just did not like these characters. They are very, very unlikable. We've got Billy, who is the leader of the band The Six, who is a cheating asshole. So he leaves his pregnant wife um, while he goes on the road with his band and has a sex fiesta. So already I'm like, am I supposed to like this guy? Cause I don't. Am I supposed to feel sorry for this guy? Cause he has a substance abuse addiction. And I was like, how am I supposed to enjoy a book where I genuinely don't like one of its main characters? All of this happens early on in the book. So I pretty much wrote Billy off since the beginning. Camilla, his pregnant wife, I didn't really feel bad for because she finds out about the drinking about the cheating, about the drugs, and stays with him. She does not leave him. Um, she honestly kind of scared me a bit because she like visualizes this future that she wants and that includes Billy, um, their marriage, and whatever kids they'll have. And she's not gonna let anybody, much less Billy himself, prevent her from having all that she dreams of. Like, don't get me wrong, Billy absolutely does not deserve this woman, but she knows what she signed up for. Daisy, though, I did feel sorry for. She also has a drinking drug problem. She starts to get famous when she starts performing or creating music with Billy and his band. And of course, being on the road so much, being in such close proximity, Billy and Daisy kind of start to fall in love. It's a little bit messed up, not just because Billy is married, but like she is just not in a good place. I mean, I just didn't see what she saw in Billy. She loves a guy that she can never have and that takes a toll on her. I did get invested in the story. I mean, as much as I dislike these characters, I was hooked on everything that happened. It was kind of like a train wreck that you can't look away from. I do give props to the incredible audiobook though. If you do have the choice, please listen to the audiobook over reading it because it is quite the experience. It's like a full cast. Everyone has a very unique and memorable voice to each of these characters. But yeah, Daisy Jones and the Six, I wish I could have loved it more. I can see why people love it so much, but I just did not like these characters. So it's a three star read for me. Next up is one of my my new favorite groveling romances, which I actually included in my groveling romances video. And this one is The Billionaire's Pregnant Mistress by Lucy Monroe. It is a Harlequin Presents book, so it is short and to the point. We get angst, we get an alpha male, we get some fantastic groveling. Dimitri, our Greek billionaire, ends things with his lover mistress, um, the heroine Xandra. He makes the mistake of not believing her when she tells him that she She's pregnant with his child, realizes that he's made this terrible mistake and wants her back, um, but can't find her for like a good month. But once he finds her, he does everything he can to earn her forgiveness and get her to marry him. It was great. I loved it. I love the angst. I love the groveling. It was exactly what I wanted out of a groveling romance. Next, I listened to two Kristen Ashley romances. Law Man and Motorcycle Man. These are the last two books in her Dream Man series. It was my first time reading Law Man, but it was my second time reading Motorcycle Man. Law Man was fantastic. I adored it. We've got a sweet and shy heroine who falls in love with her police detective neighbor. The both of them actually have had a little crush on each other for a while since they became neighbors. But when Mitch finally gets his chance to make a move on Mara, he does it. This one is kind of a single parent romance as well. Mara gets custody of her cousin's two kids because the cousin is kind of a deadbeat. So she becomes their guardian and they're like the sweetest family ever. They're so cute together. And I thought it was hilarious that the two kids a boy and a girl and they were both named Billy. Listening to the audiobook it's a little bit hard to distinguish which Billy is which but still they were such cute kids. I love them. I love them with Mara.
Mara. I love them with Mitch. And then Motorcycle Man, the last Dream Man book. I read this one a couple years ago. Um, gave it three stars. I was so sad. I didn't love it as much as everyone else did because everyone loves this book. But Tack just got on my nerves way too much and I was hoping with this reread with the audiobook I would like it or enjoy it more than I did when I first read it but no I kind of have the same problems as I did in which Tack is his overbearing over-the-top alpha self. This one is kind of MC romance, kind of office romance. The main character is hooked up before she started at her new job where the hero is her new boss. Unfortunately, where Taiwo was ready to get into a relationship, Tak was like, nah, that's not happening. But we still had a good time. He kind of puts his foot in his mouth because now that they're working together and seeing each other all the time, Tak does want a chance with Tyra again. I mean, it was cute, but Tak just got on my nerves way too much. It's always his way or the highway. And Tyra lets him do his thing because he is just that good in bed. Tak is a single parent as well. Well, he has two teenage kids. There is a spinoff series, a spinoff motorcycle club series called Chaos that I have not read yet. And Tech's two kids do get their romances in that series. So I do plan on reading it. I don't know if anyone else tries to reread books hoping that they'll like them more, but I am sad that I didn't enjoy this one the second time around. Next, I read Island Affair by Priscilla Oliveris. This is actually one of the books that I read for my rom-com video, my spring rom-com video, so if you haven't watched that, I'll link it down below. I had really high hopes for this one, um, mainly because of the gorgeous cover. It was also my first book by this author, and it sadly didn't quite live up to my expectations. Like, it wasn't bad. I still liked it. I gave it three stars, but it didn't blow me away like I expected it to. Here we have the fake relationship trope. Sarah has arrived in Key West for a vacation with her family, who she's kind of on the rocks with, so she needed her boyfriend to be there with her to kind of be a buffer but instead he ends up ditching her and dumping her so when she meets Luis the hero our firefighter hero at the airport she asks him to help her out by pretending to be her boyfriend the romance is pretty cute um, there were some parts that I really enjoyed like Luis's family his Cuban family who are so tight-knit they made such a fantastic secondary cast of characters I loved the setting of Cuban West. It was gorgeous, made me feel like I was there. But the writing, I gotta admit, is pretty cheesy. Um, it didn't really mesh well with me. And one of my biggest problems was Luis and his hangups and how it made him so closed off for way too long. So while I didn't love this one, I still am really excited to hear that it's turning into a series. I originally thought it was going to be a standalone. And I'm really, really hoping that the second book is going to be about Enrique, Luis's brother who he had a falling out with. And then I listened to the first two books in the Dating by Number series by Megan Quinn. I've really enjoyed her books, reading them and listening to them in the past, so I expected to enjoy these and I really, really did. Both of them were really cute and charming um, contemporary romances. The premise of this whole series is pretty interesting. The first book, Three Blind Dates, we have our heroine who goes on this dating app. She goes on three blind dates in this story and they are all actually genuine dates so it's not completely obvious about who which of the three is gonna be the hero it does become a little bit more obvious towards the second half of the book but I did really like that she went on actual dates with three different men the next two books are actually about the two men that she did not choose um, so I won't say exactly who the heroes are so I won't spoil you guys but I think if you read the blurbs for them you do like see who the heroes are. The second book, Two Wedding Crashers, is about two wedding crashers. The heroine is a romance author and she's kind of lost her muse so she well, her friends get her to go on a vacation to Florida to crash a wedding. The hero's friends also have the same idea and get him to go to Florida to crash their friend's wedding. It's a really cute me cute. The romance is adorable. They have such a wonderful time together in Key West and it was just so perfectly lighthearted and fun. Um, I really enjoyed both of these books. I gave both of them four stars. And then I listened to Wildcat by Max Monroe. I've only 
read or listened to a couple of their books, but I was excited for this one because it is a sports romance. We've got a quarterback hero who meets the heroine who is the flight attendant while he's flying to some game. I really liked that as soon as he met her, he just like went all in in courting her and wooing her. Cat the heroine very much has like a swept off your feet kind of romance with this quarterback. It was cute. I give it three stars. Like it wasn't anything special or unique, but I still enjoyed listening to the audiobook. And then I read another Lucy Monroe Harlequin Presents book, The Greek's Innocent Version. Really appreciate how these titles give you exactly what it says they do. I didn't love this one as much as The Billionaire's Pregnant Mistress, but I still liked it. I gave it three stars. Our rich hero thinks that the heroine Rachel is a gold digger like her mother was, so he sets out to seduce her and get revenge on the uncle who is fleeced by her mother. Of course, Rachel is nothing like her mother. She's nothing like Sebastian ever expected, and he ends up falling for her. She doesn't make it easy for him, though, when she finds out about his little scheme. So there's some good angst, some good grovel, and not quite as good as her other book, but it was still quite enjoyable. Next up, Girl Gone Viral by Alicia Rye. I love this one. I gave it four and a half stars. It is the standalone sequel to The Right Swipe, which I really enjoyed last year, but I like this one just a little bit better. It is a bodyguard romance. The hero Jazz has been Katrina's bodyguard for years, and now that Katrina has gone viral on Twitter, um, because of something she never consented to. He whisks her away to his little farm in Northern California in the countryside. And here they've got some gray force proximity going on and they're forced to confront the feelings that they have for each other. It is so sweet, so wholesome and adorable. I love Jazz and Katrina. They are such cinnamon roll characters. Such nice and wonderful people and I could not stop rooting for them. I actually went live with Alicia Rye on Instagram the other week, um, so if you missed it you can watch that video. It's on my IGTV. It's like the only video on my IGTV. And then I read my very first Smarty Pants romance. I've been wanting to read one for the longest time and my hold at the library finally came in. The holds at my library for these Smarty Pants romances audiobooks are so freaking long. I guess people love them. But this was Happy Trail by Daisy Scott. This was my first time reading this author and I liked it. It was a three-star read. It was cute but I never really got hooked onto the story or the romance and characters. Our hero is a ranger in the Great Smoky Mountains and he is quite the anti-social character. So when the heroine is dropped into his lap and needs his help getting out of the mountains. He is not happy about it, but he'll do his job no matter how much she gets on his nerves. There's a good little stuck in a snowstorm, so they have to hunker down in a cabin a bit, which was really cute and fun. I mean, if you love the great outdoors, you'll probably enjoy this romance a little bit more than I did. I read another Harlequin romance because why the heck not? This one is called The Unfaithful Wife by Lynn Graham. It's another angsty romance. There is grovel, but I would have liked a little bit more groveling than we got. In this one, our married couple, Leah and Nick, are in a sham of a marriage and Leah wants out. Leah was actually in love with Nick when she married him, but over the next five years, I think, of neglect from her husband. She wants out. She's found a man that she is having an emotional affair with and wants to be with him instead, but when Nick finds out, he is not happy. He doesn't want her to divorce him, but at the same time, he never wanted the marriage in the first place anyway. Nick is a humongous douchebag, not gonna lie. He absolutely needed to do more groveling than he actually did, but I mean, finding out that your wife has an emotional affair with someone else is quite the blow so which he deserved by the way it's a very tumultuous dramatic romance i had fun reading it now i'm probably going to be binge reading more of lynn graham's harlequins hopefully i'll find some that have a little bit more groveling and then i read one of my new favorite books of the year and that is beach read by emily henry this one it was absolutely amazing i'm sure you've already seen a ton of hype for it and it is all so worth it. I actually had never heard of Emily Henry before I got this book in the mail. Didn't know who she was, didn't know she actually wrote young adult books, 
before this adult romance, but my god am I so happy that she wrote this adult book. I've been seeing a lot of young adult authors actually writing adult romances, which makes me so happy. This romance is between Gus and January. Gus is short for Augustus, and they're actually both writers. They knew each other in college, had quite the little tension thing going on, and now they reunite years later as new neighbors for the summer. January has inherited this little cottage from her late father, who she has found out actually had an affair and cheated on her mother. So she has a lot of family issues to deal with on her own, but in the meantime, she also develops this wonderful romance with Gus. They have like adorable writing sessions, cute little dates, and it is just so hilarious and wonderful. I loved love them so much. It's not like completely a rom-com though. There are very serious elements to this book. Mostly it happens in the second half. The first half is like light flirty banter. The second half gets quite serious, focusing more on both of their internal struggles. But overall, it was such an amazing read. I had the best time reading it. Next, I read another five star, another new favorite of 2020, and that is Sea of Ruin by Pam Godwin. This one is a dark historical romance, which I don't really read all that often. I'm not sure that many dark historical romances exist. I've only read like one or two in the past. So this one I had such high hopes because I love Pam Godwin and she writes fantastic dark romances, but all of them have been contemporaries. But I was really excited to see her take on a historical romance and she knocked it out of the park. It was fantastic. It's got pirates, there is a ton of action, so much adventure, and I was just completely hooked onto this pirate romance. From the blurb, you'll see that it is a bit of a love triangle and it is, but also isn't. I loved all three of our main characters, especially our pirate captain heroine, who is so kick-ass. It does get pretty dark though. Um, there are some rape scenes, so please look up any trigger warnings that you need before going into this one. If you've read Pam Godwin in the past, you know she doesn't hold back. It's super steamy, of course. It is Pam Godwin, and I am just so happy that this lived up to my expectations. Next, I listened to the the audiobook of Jersey Six by Julie Ann. I've been wanting to read more Julie Ann after reading her for the first time last year. Loved, loved, looked the part, so I was looking forward to reading more of her books. But this one was so freaking weird. Didn't really like it all that much, gave it two stars. It's a bit of a dark, twisted story. Um, the romance is kind of there, but it's not really the focus of this book. Jersey Six, our heroine, lost her foster parents, her beloved foster parents, when she was young. Almost 10 years later, she meets this guy who has amnesia, but he can remember something about her parents and who killed her parents. And this guy leads her to Ian, the hero who is a famous rock star. It was honestly such a strange read. I never really liked any of these characters. I still do want to read more of this author's books. I know so many people love them, but this Jersey Six was probably not the best book to follow up Look the Part with. April was the month of rom-coms because I read another one, The Billionaire's Fake Fiance by Annika Martin. This one has the grumpy hero, sunshine heroine trope, a fake engagement trope. She is his hairdresser and has been for the past couple years, and everything happens on a freaking yacht. Prior to reading this one, I actually have only ever read Annika Martin's dark romances, so uh, this book was quite the different read. But I loved it. I gave it four stars. I've been wanting to read these billionaire books from her. This one is the fourth one, I believe, but it can be read as a standalone, which is what I did. Tabitha and Rex are hilarious together. Rex is the biggest grump ever, and Tabitha just can't help but push his buttons. He gives her a giant paycheck to pretend to be his fiance while he is on this yacht vacation to impress this like future client. I had a wonderful time reading this and I am so excited to catch myself up on the series and also really excited for the next book. The next book is going to be about Tabitha's friend who is 
a really sweet but shy USPS worker. And she, in all her shyness, goes up against the mean billionaire who owns her building. I ended up reading, well, listening to a couple more Devney Perry books because I listened to Tatter the other month, the first book in her La Crow series, so I figured why not finish up the series. I read the next two books, Timid and Tragic, but sadly didn't love them as much as I did Tatter. In Timid, it's got one of the tropes that I don't really like reading. Um, we have a unrequited love on the heroine side. She has been pining and waiting for this hero who is a bit of a player. This one was a three, three and a half star read. I liked it, but I did expect more. I was really hoping our heroine would make the hero work for it a little bit more, work for her love and her trust, which he broke when he completely forgot that he ever kissed her because he was completely blitzed. Willa isn't a complete pushover when it comes to Jackson, but she is a little bit. So while I wish that Willa didn't really wait and save herself for this guy, I did appreciate that Jackson did try to make up for what he did and once he was with Willa she was it for him. Still The Pining Heroine is not my favorite to read about so I'm not surprised I didn't end up loving this one. Book three is tragic and we've got new neighbors and the grumpiest surliest hero ever. After a tragic loss, Kane has holed himself up in the mountains, secluded himself so he's not happy that someone has bought the place next door and is constructing stuff and just bothering his peace and quiet. If you love a broken hero, Kane is your guy. He has experience so much hurt and loss, but it was really sweet and nice to see him open up again, open himself to love again um, because of our heroine Piper. Still, I didn't love this one as much as I did the first book. I just didn't connect very well with the main characters. And then I read If I Never Met You by Vari McFarlane. I 100% mispronounced her name in another video where I hauled this book, but she was very nice to include a pronunciation of her first name in her author bio. Hopefully I'm saying it right this time. I could still be wrong, but I like this one. I hadn't read her book from last year, Don't You Forget About Me, but I heard really great things for it, so I was excited to read this one. It's an office romance with a fake relationship. Lori, the heroine, her boyfriend has dumped her after like a decade or more, I think, of being together. He actually immediately gets into a relationship and gets that woman pregnant, so she realizes that he actually might have had a thing with her before they ever broke up. They actually still work in the same building and she needs something to get over um, the loss of her longtime relationship and being cheated on. So she and Jamie pretend to be in a very loving relationship. Jamie needs Lori to better his image um, than just being, you know, the playboy of the office. And what starts off as fake turns into something much, much more. I actually kind of skimmed through the first 100 pages just because Lori is so hung up on her ex through that whole time. I just did not want to read about that ex anymore, so skim through that. But after that, I did really enjoy the story. Jamie and Lori are super cute together. You can clearly tell that Jamie is the one falling for her first. I liked how very British this book was. I just really like this one. It is a little long, um, probably a little longer than it needed to be. Probably could have taken out maybe 50 pages in the beginning of Lori pining over her ex, but I still really liked it. It's like three and a half, four stars for me. Next up, I listened to This Is How You Lose the Time War. I wanted to read this one just because I know Riley loves this book book, but it was the kind of book, the kind of read that I, after having read it, listening to the audiobook, I still have no idea what I read. It's sci-fi, it's got time travel, um, two time traveling agents who fall in love, it's a very queer romance, but I still have like no idea what it is that they do, like I just didn't understand it. And also I didn't even know this book was a novella, I was wondering like halfway through the audiobook why I only had two hours left when I only listened to two hours of it. It was just a really confusing read and I gave it two stars. And then after reading Daisy Jones, I had to, of course, get to The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This one is the book of the month edition that I've had for years. Never read it until now. Actually, I listened to the audiobook instead of reading this one because 
why not? But the audiobook was fantastic. I really, really enjoyed this one. A lot more than I did Daisy Jones. I gave this one four stars. This one tells the story of Evelyn Hugo, who is a famous Hollywood movie icon, and how she rose to fame in the 50s and 60s. It was a really fascinating read. I loved Evelyn's character. She was so intriguing, so strong and talented. I really felt for her character because she does not have it easy. She has seven husbands throughout her career in Hollywood and some of them were not good guys. But throughout it all she was actually in love with a woman who was very very close to her. Their romance was beautiful if tragic at times but I was just rooting for Evelyn throughout the whole thing. She's not the easiest character to love. She does make some really frustrating decisions but I still rooted for her. The book like Daisy Jones is also told in a little different kind of format. Monique is actually the narrator and she is hired by Evelyn Hugo who is like 70 or 80 now to write Evelyn's biography so we get to learn Evelyn's life as it is told to Monique. I'm still not like in love with Taylor Jenkins' Raid. The only other book that I read from her, One True Loves, it was a three-star read so I don't love her as much as everyone else does but I'm really really glad that I finally read Evelyn Hugo. Next I read some Katie Robert books because I need some steam in my life and the first one was Your Dad Will Do. This one was great. It was exactly what I wanted it to be, which was filthy and dirty and lots of daddy kink. It is a forbidden romance between um, the heroine who wants to get revenge on her cheating fiance by sleeping with his dad. There's not much plot in this one. I am a little sad about that. It could have been an amazing full-length book, um, something very similar to Birthday Girl. It was just straight up sex, which I mean I don't mind, uh, so I give this one four stars. The other Katie Robert book that I read was There's for the Night, which was the Smetathon group read. This is the first book, the prequel novella, I guess, to the Thelanian Dynasty series. It's a threesome, menage romance, MMF. It is the heroine's birthday, so she celebrates at a club, and that's where she meets our two heroes, Theo and Galen. It is very sexy, but it is a novella, so there's not much to it. But I still really enjoyed it. I gave this one four stars, and I'm really excited to read the rest of the series. Next up, I read our Ravished by Romance April read, which was King of the South by Kalia Reed. This is the first book in her Belgrave Dynasty series. It's a historical romance set in the late 1910s. It's also a spin-off of the Surviving Time series, which is one of my favorite series. I love that time travel series. But this one has no time travel. Sadly, this one's a bit of a disappointment. I absolutely did not love it as much as the Surviving Time books. It was just way too long and way too boring sometimes, but I actually still do want to get myself a copy because the cover is beautiful. This one was a three-star read. It did have potential with the whole falling for the brother's best friend, but Rainey and Livingston just took way too long to get together. There's a lot of filler going on through a lot of the middle of the book. There is a fun bachelorette aspect to the romance. I did really enjoy being back with these characters, being back in this time period, and the ending leaves a lot to be excited for in the next book. Also, if you missed our live chat, I'll link it down below. Our next or this month's raid is The Locker Room by Megan Quinn, so if you want to join us, please do. All the info for that is in our Instagram. And then I read Pride, Prejudice, and Other Flavors by Sonali Dev. This one I was excited about because I know my friend Elisa loves it, but I am sad that I didn't love it as much. I gave this one three stars. I was really excited because it is like a gender-bent retelling of Pride and Prejudice. Trisha, our neurosurgeon heroine, is Mr. Darcy. DJ, our Elizabeth Bennett is their family's new chef. Trisha is arrogant, DJ is judgmental, so uh, they do not have a good time when it comes to being in the same room with each other. I wanted to love this one but I just had the hardest time enjoying the hero's character because of how many assumptions that he always makes about the heroine. I know he's the prejudice and pride and prejudice but it just got really annoying really fast. I did really enjoy Trisha's family, the dynamics of the 
Rajay family. And I really liked Sonali Dev's writing. This was my first book by this author, but I am very excited to continue with the series. Next, I read all four books in the Wolf Hotel series by Nina West. This was a total binge read. I could not put the series down. I loved it. Overall, I'm giving this series four stars. There are some books that are better than others, like the first and last books were my favorite, but it was such a great addicting read. There's an age gap, uh, forbidden romance, rich hero falls for a small town girl. I read the series for my romance author pen name video because Nina West is a pen name for K. Tucker. It was very hot and steamy. Sometimes it was with more than two people. You can tell that the writing improves with each book and I'm just really hoping that we get another book about a side character that I'm very very invested in. I also read Love Wrecked by Karina Halley. This one is her deserted island grumpy hero sunshine heroine romance and I enjoyed this one so so much. It was hilarious and ridiculous sometimes but I just enjoyed Daisy and Ty so much. They do not get along when Daisy arrives in New Zealand for her sister's wedding but they're forced to put up with each other when they crash land on a deserted island on their way to Fiji with the bride and groom. It's not like any of the intense angsty stranded on an island kind of romances that I read in the past. None of them are about to die anytime soon but it's just they get into some pretty hilarious shenanigans sometimes. I also love that my name is in this book. Um, Lacey is Daisy's sister, the bride, but this one was great and I had such a fun time reading it. My second to last book, because we are almost done, is The Wrong Game by Candy Steiner. I still have yet to fall in love with the Candy Steiner book. Sorry, Jessica, but this one was a three star read. I mean, it was cute. I liked it, but I didn't love it. I was a little disappointed disappointed because I was expecting this one to be a sports romance but it was actually a sports watching romance. Our main characters fall in love while going to football games together and watching them together. Gemma is newly divorced and trying to move on. She goes on the rebound but Zach, our hero, is pretty much the only one for her. Zach is the sweetest, dreamiest guy. So perfect for Gemma. Trying to get her to take a chance on him but Gemma is very very hesitant to ever put her heart on the line again. I like these characters but I never truly fell in love with this story. And my last book of April was The Billionaire by Jessica Bird aka J.R. Ward. This was another book for my romance pen names video. It was a three star read. Nothing you know all that impressive but I still liked it. I liked how J.R. Ward's writing was a little bit tamed down for this contemporary romance compared to her Black Dagger Brotherhood books. We've got our workaholic billionaire hero who has to go back to his house growing up to clean things up after his father passes away. He ends up falling for one of the neighbors, a nurse who is actually friends with his father and helped take care of him. It's actually the first book in a series that was never finished so I am very sad that I don't get like two more books for Sean's other two brothers. And that's it for my April wrap up. If you've read any of these books let me know. Um, as always links are in the description. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you all next time. Bye!